Chapter 4 deals with curve sketching and 4.1 talks about the increasing and decreasing functions. So at this point you've done um, increasing and decreasing intervals. You did that in grade 12 advanced functions. But in, in this case we're going to be using the derivative to help sketch functions and we're going to be finding the maximum values by setting the first derivative equal to zero. So in this section although the um, the theory part is quite simple. There are a number of different types of questions that I will be covering that is that are part of your homework. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is where, how do you determine an increasing function? So the description is that if x1 is less than x2, in other words, say this was 1 and this is 4, that's all that means, and f at x2 is greater than f at x at 1, then the tangent slopes are positive, so you can see that if I drew tangent points to this curve, they would all have positive slopes, and the function is increasing. Okay, so that's pretty simple. You can read from left to right. So in other words, if I go from left to right and the function gets higher, then it's increasing. So sometimes the descriptions are a little wordier than they need to be. And again, this is a case here where it says x1 is less than x2. So let's say this is 1, this is 2. And f at x2 is less than f at x1. And the tangent slopes are negative. So here if I drew a tangent slope to this line, um, maybe it was increasing a little bit there. That would not be true. So from here to here, the function is definitely decreasing because the tangent slopes are negative. You should also note that the tangents in a de decreasing interval, the tangent lines are above the function, whereas when it was increasing, the tangent lines are underneath the function. And that's going to be important on um, another section that we do when we talk about points of inflection. So it's decreasing on the interval x1 to x2 or wherever um, you're asked to describe it for. So I want to do some examples. The first is going to be using the derivative, graph the following function. Okay, so using your knowledge from grade 12 advanced functions, you know this is a cubic function. You know that it has a positive leading coefficient, and you know that it's going to start in quadrant 3 and end in quadrant 1. So don't just rely on your calculus derivative techniques. Use your knowledge from the previous course, and you can always flip back and forth to, to check your answers using either calculus or using your advanced functions knowledge. So the first thing I would do is take the derivative. So y prime here is 3x squared minus 3. And don't forget that you must say for critical values, CVs, set y prime equal to 0. So when I set this equal to 0 and I factor out a 3, then I can see that I still have a difference of squares here that I can factor again. And what I'm trying to do is find the places where the slope is 0. So if a function has 0 slope, it means I'm either at a maximum or a minimum value. Okay, So therefore x equals minus 1 or 1 and these are the critical values. So critical values at minus 1 and 1. Now if I want to know what the height of the function is, and this is where you have to be careful that you're plugging these values back into the original function to find the critical points. So y when x equals minus 1. So if this had been f at x, I could just say f at minus 1, but it's y, so I'm going to write it like this, and this is quite a legitimate um, way to describe it. So minus 3, minus 1, oh, minus 1, plus 1. So minus 1 cubed is negative 1. That's plus 3, plus 1. So that's 4 minus 1 is 3. So that means there is a critical point at... The critical point is at uh, minus 1 and 3. And you do the same thing for when x equals 1. So you would say, okay, that means y 
when x equals 1. Now y, make sure you're not plugging it back into the derivative because obviously if I plug back 1 into the derivative function, I'm going to get 0 and that would just be not right. Okay, so we put in 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 plus 1. That's 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 3 is minus 1. And the other critical point is 1 and minus 1. So I'm going to put those on my graph, 1 and minus 1, and minus 1 and 1, 2, 3, and that's here. And I know I'm going from this quadrant to this quadrant, so my function would have to go, oh, it might probably be a good idea to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept, for y-intercept, you're going to set, and you always write this out, set x equal to 0. So y-intercept is, I put in a 0 here, 0, 0, y-intercept is 1. So it's going to go through here. Now, I know this function is going to go like this, right? Because I know a little bit about cubic functions. I know it had a positive leading coefficient. So what we want to know, though, is, is this the point? Was it a maximum or a minimum? And obviously, you know that because of what you know from advanced functions. But you can also see that as I go from left to right, and I'm going to write a little derivative graph here. I'm going to call it y prime, and this is also a very legitimate way of doing what we call a first derivative test. Now, first derivative tests aren't really talked about until the next chapter, but I think it's critical for your understanding of what we're doing here right now that you know what we're doing. So if I put in my critical points here, the critical values, right, these ones here, I put them on my graph, and I check points to the left and right of these values. So if I put in negative 2 into the derivative, okay, that's why I wrote y prime here. This is a y prime because I'm checking the slopes. So if I put in a number less than negative 1 into the derivative here, let's say I put in negative 2. That would be 12 minus 3 is 9. All I care about is that it is positive. So the function is increasing. And then if I go from minus 1 to 1, say I put in 0 here into y prime, I would get a negative value, which means the function is decreasing. And then if I put in 2, obviously I'm going to get the same answer as I did when I put in negative 2 because I squared it. So 12 minus 3, 9, positive. So this shows that there is a minimum. This is a minimum here. And this is a maximum. So these are local mins and max on the interval. So um, this critical point minus 1, 3, minus 1, 3, minus 1, I guess I could have put those on there. So minus 1, 3 is a maximum and 1 and minus 1 is a minimum value. So that's what you're going to do with this, what we call a first derivative test. The first derivative test is basically checking the derivative function to the left and right of the critical values to see if the slope is increasing or decreasing. And again, remember that we're talking about the slope. So sometimes students forget which equation do I plug these things into. So if you're checking the slope, so I want to know that was positive, that's negative, I'm using y prime. Okay, let's move on to the second question. This one is asking you to graph this function, x over x squared plus 1. So we have all kinds of things that we need to find when you're doing um, a graphing analysis. And later on in the chapter, there's a complete algorithm of the, the things that you need to check for. So basically, we're looking to see, is there a vertical asymptote? And you know, for a vertical asymptote, that means the denominator, um, it's a value that makes the denominator zero. And in this case, there is no value. Because if I set this equal to zero, let's see if I did this. And this is a very common mistake that students will say plus or minus one. But look what happens when I move this to the other side. X squared equals negative one. So therefore, there is no vertical asymptote. There's no solution. You can't square a number and get a negative value. 
So there's no vertical asymptotes. What about a horizontal asymptote? This brings back your knowledge from advanced functions as well. For horizontal, I want to know what happens as x approaches infinity. In other words, you don't have to say infinity. Well, you should here, but when you're thinking about it, you're saying, what happens is if x gets really, 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 really big? So if I squared something really big and added 1 to it, this number in the denominator is going to be significantly larger than the number in the numerator, even though that will still be a large number. I'm dividing by something much larger, and so that means that y is going to approach 0. So that means there's a horizontal asymptote, and it is y equals 0. Okay, so we've got our asymptotes covered. What else do we need to know? We need to know what the x and y intercepts are. So the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. So all that means is what? how do I make the numerator 0? So if I set this equal to 0, that means that x equals 0 is going to be the intercept is going to be 0, right? And so you normally say the x-intercept is 0. You don't say x equals 0 because that generally means you're talking about a line, x equals 0, which it isn't. The x-intercept is 0. Um, I should have put a 4 here. So for the y-intercept, I set x equal to 0. Can't spell today. If I put 0 in... For x here, 0 divided by 1 is 0. So I would say the y-intercept is 0. So I've got my x-intercept, my y-intercept. I know there's no vertical asymptotes, and I found the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and see if I can find any maximum and minimums or critical values for the function. Now, critical value can also be what makes the denominator zero. So vertical asymptotes are also considered critical values, but in this case, I don't have any. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative, y prime. Now we have a quotient, so I must apply the quotient rule, which is your ho d high rule. So I do ho d high, derivative of the top is one, minus high d ho, the derivative of x squared plus one is two x, all over ho squared, so I have x squared plus 1 squared. And I'm going to simplify the numerator. So I have x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared, and it's still all, all over x squared plus 1 squared. And this gives me in the numerator a negative x squared, negative x squared plus 1, over x squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so I've got my derivative, and I'm going to say what I always say when I'm trying to find critical values. So for critical values, I want to set y prime equal to 0. And the only thing that will possibly make y prime 0 is if the numerator is 0. You can't have 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to say x squared is equal to 1, so I'm just bringing this up here and set it to 0, so I brought this to the other side. So x is equal to plus or minus 1. Don't forget the plus or minus. Okay, It's a very common mistake. Okay, so I know these are critical values, and I want to find the y-coordinate. Very, very important that you think about that as you get to this point. If I want a point I need the original function. A point, use the original function. Okay, so when x equals 1, y is equal to 1 over 1 squared plus 1 is a half. So the critical point is going to be 1 and 1 half for the y-coordinate. Now I'm going to do the same thing when x equals negative 1. y is equal to 1 over negative 1 squared. I have the same thing, right? I get 1 half. So I have 1 and a half 
um, when x is negative 1, just a minute here, I had negative 1 up here, I'm sorry, negative 1 over 2, so negative a half. So the other critical point is 1 and negative 1 half. Okay, so I want to check to see if these are actually critical points, if there's a maximum or minimum. Is there a change in the slope? So the slope has to change from negative to positive or positive to negative in order for it to be a max or a min. Okay, So I'm going to write out my number line like this. I'm going to call it y prime. Label it. Very important. And my critical points are, oh, I didn't put the negative here. So I have 1 and I have negative 1. And I don't have a vertical asymptote, so I don't have to put this on, on here. So I'm going to check y prime. So that's this, this equation here. You're working with this one, right? Don't go back up to this one. That gives you the point. This is your test, your first derivative test. Let's call it that right here first derivative test. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. That's negative 4 plus 1 is negative in the numerator. The denominator is squared, so it's going to be positive. So this is negative, and I have negative slope. Between minus 1 and 1, I choose 0. I always choose 0 if you can. It's easy to work with. So I have 1 over 1 is 1. That's positive. So I have positive slope here. And after 1, if I put in 2 and squared, that would give me 4, negative 4. Don't forget, I'm squaring before I apply that negative. So that gives me negative over a positive is a negative. And that means there is a maximum at x equals 1. So this is a maximum. We'll come back here and state that. And minus one and a half, this is a minimum. So you see how it's a minimum because I went down, I had negative slope, and then I went to positive slope. You can actually even sketch in the graph, right? It's gonna go like this, and then like this. So the other thing is, um, I have my minimum value at minus one and minus one half. I'm gonna do it in green on the graph here. So negative one and negative a half, that's here. That's a minimum. I have an asymptote right here too, don't I? Remember I said a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And I have one and one half, that's a maximum value. And I think you might remember from advanced functions that you can cross a horizontal asymptote for finite values of x. And we have an x-intercept, y-intercept was right here. So as this approaches infinity, the function is going to approach 0. And when we go this way, this is going to approach 0. So there's my graph. Okay, so you have to be careful that you're checking uh, using a first derivative test. Again, this isn't part of 4.1, but it's definitely something you're going to do many, many times. So I thought might as well include that here and that will help. Now if you were asked for the increasing and decreasing intervals, so the function is decreasing. So let's get a, a red pen here. I'll show you where it's decreasing. Right, so it's decreasing here. This is all decreasing. This is decreasing. So the other point here, let's find another color. It's increasing on this interval. It's not really much different color, is it? Okay, so this is increasing. And these two other areas were decreasing. Decreasing, decreasing. So in terms of interval notation, you would say increasing. Um, so we have intervals. So this is all part of your um, your algorithm for analyzing a graph. So it's going to be increasing um, for x is an element of, so it's going from minus 1 to 1. And I use round brackets because I'm not including those points. It's neither increasing nor decreasing when the slope is 0. So you don't include those. 
and decreasing on the interval for x is an element of negative infinity to minus 1, so from here to here, and from 1 to infinity, so u for union, 1 to infinity. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty lengthy um, analysis. Um, some of them will be much more difficult than that, but this is a good introduction one for you to get a grasp of, of what you're going to need to, to look for. Okay, so the next question I want to do is a question from the homework. And it says, determine where f prime x is equal to zero. Now, you might think that's a pretty easy thing to do, but I find that a lot of students have trouble with um, taking the derivative of this product that also has an exponent. So you're using the chain rule and the product rule together. So let's try the derivative. You might want to freeze frame right now and try this and then come back. So I'll go ahead and do it for you here. So f prime x, so remember we do the first, so I'm going to leave that alone, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of this is 2x. First times the derivative of the second plus the second, x squared minus 9, times the derivative of the first. So I have to do the exponent first. So I'm going to write 2. I leave what's in the bracket alone. I decrease it by 1. So 2 goes to 1. And the derivative of the inside, which is 2. And so now I'm going to expand this. Um, I'm just going to simplify the other, the second part here. And then we're going to factor it because you're trying to find the zeros. You can't find the zeros when it's in this format. So 2 times 2, that gives me 4 times x squared minus 9 times 2x minus 1. So now I want to look around this plus sign for common factors. So I'm going to pull out a common factor. What is common to both sides of this equation? Well, the first thing would be that I have um, I have 2 here, right? And I have 4 here, so I can take 2 out of each of these. So I'm going to pull out a 2. And then both sides of the equation have a 2x minus 1. This one has two of them, but as long as they each have 1, I can pull that out. So I'm going to take out a 2, 2x minus 1, make a big square bracket, and then watch on both sides of this plus sign is what you're looking for. What did I take out? So I took out a 2, I took out one of these, so I'm left with x times 2x minus 1. And I'm going to write it out long ways for now, 2x minus 1. On the right-hand side of the plus sign, I've taken out a 2, so that leaves me still with 2, because I had 4 here. I took out this 2x minus 1, it's right here, and I still have an x squared minus 9. Okay, so very easy for me to tell you what makes this 0. Obviously, it's going to be a half. But I need to simplify this side so that I can tell you what makes what's in this big bracket equal to 0. So I expand 2x squared minus x. So sometimes students think they've done way too much work, but you haven't. There's just lots to do here. Okay, so now I have 2, 2x minus 1. And in this bracket, I have 4x squared minus x minus 18. And I want to be able to factor this. So what makes a product of 4 times 18? That's 72. So a product of negative 72 and a sum of 1. And I think you can see right away that it's minus 9 and 8. So minus 9 and 8. Minus 9 times 8 is minus 72. Whoops. Minus 9, oh, this should be a sum of minus 1. Minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1. Now, it's a complex trinomial. It has a 4 out front here. So I put both of these over 4 and I reduce. So this becomes 2 over 1. And this one, I can't reduce. So now I just write out my little brackets here. So 2x minus 1 and my factors are 4x minus 9 and x plus 2. 
So if you expanded this, you should get back to that. It's always a good thing to do um, to check your work. Okay, so now I'm going to say for critical values, because they want to know where is f prime x equal to zero. For critical values, set f prime x equal to zero. So x is going to be equal to what makes this bracket zero? One half. This bracket, nine quarters. And this bracket, negative two. Now I'm going to do one more step here and that is to determine whether they are minimums or maximums and what the critical values are. Now the critical values, I'll let you figure that out on your own. You had to plug back in these into the original function right, to find the y coordinate or the height of the function when x is each of these values. But I can do a first derivative test by calling this f prime x and on this number line I'm going to put in these critical values. So I have minus 2, I have a half, and I have 9 quarters. So into the derivative function, this simplified one here is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to test some values. So I'm going to try negative 3 first. So some teachers make you write out all these intervals but you can pretty much do this on your head, right? So if I put in, say I put in negative three, so this would be negative six minus one, so that's, the two is positive, and then this little bracket here would be negative, and if I put in negative three, it would be negative again, because I would have minus 21, and if I put in negative here, this would also be negative. So I have, oops, I didn't mean to put it like that, so I have a negative, times a negative, times a negative, times a positive, and that's all negative. So it's downhill here, negative slopes. Between minus two and one, I plug in zero very easily here. Put in x is zero, so I have two times negative one times negative nine, so it's negative times a negative times a positive, and that, of course, is a positive. So that means at minus two, I should have a minimum minimum, not a mix, but a minimum. And when I go between a half and nine quarters, I'm going to plug in one, nice and easy. So it's positive times a positive times a negative times a positive. So I had three positives, one negative, so that means this will be negative, downhill. And on the other side of nine quarters, nine quarters is two and a bit, so let's try three. So I have positive, 6 minus 1, that's still positive. 12 minus 9 is positive, and 3 plus 2 is positive, all positives. So my function is going to go like this. Now you can see from the original function that it is a quartic function. 2x squared times x squared, this is a fourth degree, right? Fourth degree function. Fourth degree. So it means it has it has two minimums. So this is going to be a minimum at nine quarters. It's going to be a max at one half. It's going to be a minimum at minus two. And of course, you still need to find, you still need to find those y coordinates. This isn't a critical point, it's a critical value. Critical point means x and y. Okay, so this is getting pretty long, so I'm going to stop here, but I do have two more very important questions that I'm going to do in a second part for you. Keep studying.